Blitz is defined as a sudden, savage attack. It is indeed all this. The effect is sure. The premise is simple. It's a basic, primal confrontation, man to man. No excuses are offered. None accepted. Welcome to the latest edition of Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Looks like a radio station. Now, here are your hosts, Lifetime Longhorn Rod Babers. Pure athlete, yeah. I transcend race, hombre. Matt Butler. I don't talk <laughs> man. I back it up. And we are sock full of that, man. Damn right. And Jeff Howe. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. If you're going to blitz, come strong, but don't come at all. Coming strong with another edition of Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. I am Jeff Howe. We've got a lot to get to, so let's not waste any time. However you're listening to this podcast, whether you're an iTunes subscriber, you get it at Horns247.com, the multitude of podcast apps and channels there are out there that stream this show. Thank you for listening. If you're on Facebook Live, thank you for being with us as we go through another edition of the Blitz. We're talking NFL Draft talking texas football and i've got two interesting questions regarding the longhorns to pose to matt and rod so let me go ahead and bring in the rest of the team first off you can't see him he's out of view but my man travis over here the best damn videographer in the podcast game travis is a busy man man. yeah he's a he's actually yeah he's 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 actually kind of a big time Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's a jack of all trades yeah we're actually a little low on on, on the totem pole for travis Mm -hmm. i learned that recently and I didn't know that. It's so, shocking that we no, even he's, he's way more connected than radar. He's cut him from ready the same loin like my cousin Jason yeah. that does a lot of video stuff. Them yeah. two, very similar. Not guys. gonna give out his resume, but yes. he's well connected. He's in that know. We just know him as Travis, but you know, yeah. so Travis is an integral part of what we're doing here. Uh, let me bring in the rest of the team now. Uh, he is the master of the soundboard, the drop machine extraordinaire, the man behind the glass. Matt Butler, what's up, Matt? I'll just uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say about Texas football, and then I've been paying a lot of attention to all the Texas basketball players in the NBA this week. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. It's still a lot. Yeah, I yeah, believe Texas, a good Texas has more still than anybody. Yes, more uh, talent from the University of Texas in the NBA Conference Ooh. semifinals. Really? Than yeah, program. still seven right now. I think it's three more. I saw Horns 24-7 updated the numbers, Hold too. Up. Who, had, who has the second most? UCLA, Kentucky, and one other, I believe. They all are around, like, have four or three, something wow. like that. Yeah. Nice. I, I like know that Texas stat. has the most at seven in the conference finals, and that's after losing out with, like, Miles Turner and some of those guys in the first round. Oh, but, I like this. Yeah, pretty impressive. I like that. That's a nice stat. Okay, boom. I'm using that stat on the show. Mas numeros. Yeah, getting that done. He loves stats. Uh, he loves a lot of things about sports. That's why he is a renaissance man. He is uh, our lockdown corner here on the show. Lifetime Longhorn, 2002 UT All-American, 2002 semifinalist. For the Jim Thorpe Award, fourth-round draft choice of the New York Giants back in 2003, spent his NFL career with the Giants, Lions, Bears, Bucks, Broncos, and a year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the CFL. <laughs> Hamilton when, he, Tiger when he was done with football, got himself back to Austin, Texas, and the 40 Acres where he earned his degree. He wears his T-ring proudly when he can find it, which he doesn't right now. But I'm going to get that damn T-ring this year. Uh, some, I'll get to who told me in a minute that you need to get that fixed, uh, told me that this weekend. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> He is a card-carrying member of DBU nonetheless. Number 21 in your program, number one in your hearts, Mr. Rod Babers. Rod, before we get into the football discussion, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Harrison Brown, the young man who yeah. uh, was uh, Very tragically had his life taken away uh, down on the 40 Acres on uh, Monday. Just, man, just crazy, Senseless. bizarre, just, yeah. Can't mm-hmm. even put into words uh, something... Something no parent should ever have to deal with, uh, and I know his father's apparently dealing with some uh, medical complications. So, uh, I, but it, you know, it's times like this where it does show you, even though in in the craziness and in the chaotic world we live in, uh, that there are plenty of good people out there. And I saw in less than twenty four hours, uh, I, I don't know if it was his fraternity brother, somebody had set up a GoFundMe account for the family, uh, and it had uh, over forty thousand dollars raised in less than twenty four hours. So, uh, again, man, it, it's you know, words can't describe the the, tr- the levity of the tragedy, but uh, it's good to know that at times of crisis, there are good people in the world who, who do want to do good things and mean well. And to see yeah. kind of the UT community uh, really come together on this thing is, uh, you know, you wish it didn't have to be under these circumstances, but it's nice to know that there are there are people that care, people that have hearts and uh, people that understand and, and 
I understand kind of the levity, the gravity of the situation. A suspect was taken into custody relatively quickly. I mean, yep. I don't know. The, I'm not going to break down the timeline, but that only a suspect. I mean, I haven't heard updates on you know any uh, new evidence, but I'm sure they have witnesses. And um, yeah, it's more down to motive now if it's a mental health thing yeah, or if there was exactly. you know, and that's I, all all they've disclosed so far. Okay, but yeah. Rod, for yeah. those of those so of you who props to the APD and. Uh, yeah, too. those of you who aren't familiar with that part of campus, Rod, that's that's one of the busiest spots on campus, especially at that yeah. time of day. You're talking about Gregory Gym, Speedway, that whole area. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, that, that, that's really scary. We mm-hmm. and, and there have been situations, I mean, obviously there's a history. There's actually, and you know, I'm not getting grim, there's a uh, special, I think PBS actually did a special. Yeah, uh, like I called watched the it. Ta- did you see that? Yeah. Was it was it called The Tower? The Tower, yeah. Yeah, it was it was really well done. Not mm-hmm. to uh, bring up something like that, like obviously while we're reflecting on such a a, 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 a grave, unfortunate situation, but it it does show you that I mean they the campus security is always kind of evolving too. I mean they're getting, they I mean they had another incident on campus not too long ago with a young lady um, that was actually. Like not too long, not too close, not well, too far from like Chester, right? It was like uh, unfortunately the, Monday night they found another a totally in- separate incident, but there was another stabbing on West Campus uh, yeah. Monday evening. Yeah, so yeah. I mean it's that's one of the things, man. I mean it's at at this point mental health, I'm sure, is an issue for some folks uh, as you brought up, but yeah, I mean that campus safety is, I mean it's a it's a huge issue. I mean all yep. across the country, it really is. I mean that's you got a lot of young people on campus. Um, anything can happen at any given time. So Public people space. can be, have the right to be there. So yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, defer. Yeah, I mean, a lot of young kind of uh, thriving opinions. Uh, con- Mind, you know exactly. I mean? But you know, I mean, all kind of stuff. You know, I mean, you never really know motive in terms of these types of instances. I'm just glad it. You know, I mean, that it wasn't. You know, because I heard there were some r- reports. I think just rumors, not even reports, of like bomb threats, stuff like that going on, and and it didn't get that. It didn't get it, none of that was confirmed. So, so thoughts and prayers out to the family and uh, everybody down on the forty uh, that's been impacted by this. Uh, but let's go ahead and and try to give everybody something to kind of uplift, lift the spirits a little bit, uh, get your mind off the off the craziness. And I tell you what, Rod, I tell you who told me that uh, you need to get the T ring uh, issue taken care of. That would be one Papa Foreman. Who told me that when I was at Deontay's <laughs> draft party? Nice, on Friday, nice. yeah. almost right after I walked in the Look door, he said, "Hey, you tell Rod to get that T ring taken care of." Hey, <laughs> no doubt, hey, hey, I, I will. I'll go over there on the four days and get it taken care of. I promise. My girl's getting on me about it. My dad, and mom have asked me about it. Okay, when, of people, when pops is getting, yeah, is starting to poke the bear yeah. a little bit, then they you know want to see time. me like, yeah, wear the T ring like a superhero. You got to you make the mean? people that are proud of you proud. You know what I mean? So I'll, yeah, I will. I'll go over there. I don't, I don't know exactly. How much it'll cost to get it done, but I'll get it done. Speaking of Papa Foreman, before we get into what Deontay they serve and at the uh, draft party, like what I, food was there? I, I, I'll get into that. Yeah, see, that's what uh, I want we'll to get into. That's that. actually key to me. I always wonder yes. what food is being served at these draft parties. Can't thank uh, Derek Foreman, uh, Deontay, the Foreman family. Can't thank them enough for allowing us to kind of be a part of the draft process. Um, nice. yeah, whether cool you, family. Whether, awesome whether you talk about uh, you know the Horns twenty four seven family, the Blitz family, uh, we're all one entity. And mm. uh, for us to be in on that experience. As a matter of fact, if you guys go to the site right now, Horns247.com, our Eyes of Texas feature that came out yesterday, I basically have a timeline of the entire night laying out Deontay's draft night. So it kind of takes you behind the scenes of what goes on at a draft party, kind of what the prospect deals with as he's seeing you know, names come off the board. And, and I, Deontay talks about you know, watching so. Joe, his thoughts on Joe Mixon coming off the board, uh, his thoughts on his workout with Joe. Bill Belichick. Mm. Uh, all that stuff is in there. So kind of what the family's emotions were throughout the night. So all that stuff is in there. But uh, that was a really cool experience to be a part of. Uh, obviously, we know Deontay Foreman goes 89th overall, uh, the 25th pick in the third round, to the Houston Texans. And it's a beautiful thing. Rod, I'll say this too. It's a beautiful thing. Moments, af- moments after the pick came in, it's a beautiful thing. Papa Foreman turns to me and says, hey, I bet you Rod's really happy right now. No, we actually were, uh, me and my girlfriend were yelling and screaming. She was more excited than I was. I got home. She was had already recorded the the draft, and she was like, "I'm just waiting to see where Deontay Foreman's gonna get drafted." And she was upset, obviously, like a lot of people about the Joe Mixon thing. Uh, the Joe Mixon thing, I because basically now looking back on it, I think there were four teams, 
Uh, Adam Schefter said uh, like uh, twenty, like twenty something teams had taken um, and Joe Mixon off their board. Clearly, the Bengals were not one of them. The Bengals. Uh, we know the Bengals have a history though <laughs> yes. of that. You know, great I mean, value. Avantes Burfick yes, a few years ago. <laughs> Pac Man Jones of rolling the dice on guys who may have baggage. I- anyway, you know, separate issue. So everybody's waiting on it, and I do remember Mark Vandermeer. I do remember this specifically. He was on six ten in Houston. And I was just listening, just, you know, and it was actually that day, um, early that morning, and on their morning show, and he said, uh, it, he, said, I, I, he said, if, I do believe that if the Deontay Foreman is there in the third round, he had this, like, mock draft. They were doing, like, a little mock draft. He said, I think they're going to take Deontay Foreman. Nice. He said, they really, really like him. And I was like, huh, man, Mark Vandermeer. We've had him on the show. I like Mark Vandermeer. Hey, Mark Vandermeer is, you know, he's a, he's a play-by-play voice of the Houston Texans. He's pretty connected. I know that the Houston Texans had um, you know, Deontay Foreman for a workout. He, actually, yeah, Deontay this. Foreman, and this is big. Deontay Foreman went to their regional. local regional the area, yes, workout, area yeah. workout. Now, usually, um, big time draft picks, which Deontay Foreman is, they don't have to go to those type of workouts because mm-hmm. I did. That was a fourth round draft. Those pick. are the regional guys. That yeah. same Houston State guys yeah. aspiring for the last dream to make a roster. You know, exactly. undrafted guys. All the guys who probably didn't get a chance to go to the combine who may have been overlooked, who don't have a big platform. Hey, in the region, hey, come on on up. You know what I mean? You run a 4-3, we may look at you, you know, depending on how you, uh, you know, they'll give you a shot. Of course, they're always looking for talents. But, you know, usually if you know you're going to get drafted in the top, I don't know, four right, four rounds, I didn't go. I, you mean, you won the Doak me. Walker Award. I mean, yeah, it, 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 yeah, guys like Deontay Foreman are not supposed to go right. to those types of workouts. But Deontay Foreman was apparently so, you know, interested in that opportunity to have an audience with the Texans. He went and basically Bill O'Brien said this. I'm, yeah, I it, saw it. It was great. You see that? He volunteered the info, sort of like how yes. Earl Thomas had to, like, wait, the, before you go, I got to add a compliment. He added that compliment at the end of his interview about the whole Texans draft, and he pointed out, oh, yeah, that's what stood out to me. Yeah, he said, B- Bill O'Brien said that, uh, he's like, honestly, he's like, why did you draft Deontay Foreman? What stood out? He said he came to our local kind of regional area, you know, area workout where, you know, it's kind of an open invitation right. to other, you know, you know, different prospects and guys of his ilk. They don't come to workouts like that. And that's, and he had a workout the previous day, too. like uh-huh. a back, So it was basically a back-to-back workout. He still came out there, did the workout with them. They loved it. They thought that meant – and, they're, you know, the Texans have had the fewest amount of arrests in the NFL since 2000, the fewest amount of arrests in the last decade. They're big on character. Rick Smith has been there for over a decade. They're big on care. That's how everybody knew, like, oh, they ain't drafting Joe Mixon or D.D. Westbrook. They're not drafting guys like that. They just don't go there. They don't like guys with baggage. So they like guys that they believe have very high character. Deshaun Watson. Why did you draft Deshaun Watson? Well, he's a winner. Hey, guys, he's a winner. (laughs) Hey, guys, unbelievable character. Have you sat down with him? He's unbelievable. Hey, guys, great. He has has that it quality. That's all they talk about. I'm like, What's this completion percentage? Like, what, what is he doing? <laughs> give, me, give me some actual tangible stuff on the field. Everything about him is intangible. So that's right. what they're drafting. They're drafting on gut right now. And it's, it's interesting because I think they learned a lesson from Brock Osweiler. They signed Brock mm. Osweiler, biggest free agency signing they've had in the history of the Texans. And they had, they had never met him prior to signing him. It was just one of those free agency things where the time didn't work out. There were rules. There were they couldn't go interview him, and they didn't. They d- never met him. They just they literally it's all signed the him, guy. and then they brought him in. It was like it was like you know a mail order bride. Like hey man, what's what's going on? Hey, mail order, it's like mail they order quarterback. Out, yeah, no, exactly. it's just like you check out an online yeah. profile of a chicken. It looks great yes. and awesome. You see, oh man, six seven laser rocket Boom. arm, gonna be great. Hand picked by yeah. Elway. Then it wasn't. And, and you know, it, it, and, it, and it was. They, they liked the way he looked and everything, but on the field, obviously, it didn't work out. And they believe, I think, in their gut, like, man, in football, some of it is about gut. Like, you got to meet your quarterback. The guy's going to be the, 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 you know, the yeah. leader of that locker room. Especially you gotta, that position. You got to yeah. meet that guy. So you got to talk to him, like, hey, man, what's up? You got to look him in the eye, like, hey, what's up, man? What you about? What you about? You know what I mean? Like, what's like, yep. little man to man? What are you about? Because that's what it's going to come down to. I know a lot of y'all guys got the skills to make, you know, what I mean, to make the throws. And but are you going to be able to win over the locker room fourth quarter when the fit hits the shan? Or are you going to be that guy that has the testicular fortitude to to uh, in a lot in a room of alpha males sit up and say, "Whoa, I got this. Yeah. Don't panic. I got this." 
That you know should I mean? be a familiar topic to Texas fans because how long have we been talking about that yeah. with the quarterback yeah. position on the 40? And I, ironically, and I'll get off to Texas. I'm a Texas fan, so you know, just give me a little second there. I'll get off to Texas. But ironically, they weren't prepared for that when Vince Young was available. <laughs> Remember, they went, they went the other route. Like, nah, we're going to go with – we're not going with intangibles and all that. We're going we're gonna to go with the, the safer pick, which it was the right pick with Mario Williams. But who knows, with the Texans, it might have worked out differently. Right. They won't really do that. Now they're so desperate at the quarterback position after Brock Osweiler and Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Mallett and – TJ Yates. TJ, oh, just, just continue. Brian See, Hoyer. TJ Yates actually won – Playoff game, so yeah. give him some somehow problems. he played in like so, two right? playoffs, right? Um, he played the last two years. They're so desperate now. It's like no, 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 hell, man. We went after the guys we thought we let's go after the guy that's that's just we seen right. we seen him win titles. And same thing with Deontay Foreman, man. We seen it with him. Even and you know what? The Big Twelve did hurt Deontay Foreman stock. My theory was correct. Yes, the the, the that's why people they mentioned it on the draft right after he was drafted. Like yeah, hey, playing against the Big Twelve. Yeah, you know, this count those numbers. Come, but exactly, yeah, inflated numbers because of the Big Twelve. So the Perception, Big Twelve, man. The, the yes, exactly. The terrible reputation of the Big Twelve is hurting draft prospects. And you know, oh, did you hear what Bob Bob Bowlesby said? Do I want to? <laughs> no, he said uh, recently. He said these uh, college football players aren't. I want to make sure I get it right. They aren't. Um, Oh, like amateur athletes! They're they're not amateur college, athletes, they're but they're college not college athletes. Yeah, they're not professional. Said they're not athletes professional either. athletes. They're college athletes. Right, uh, meaning and a little purgatory. Area. Yes, and he, okay, yeah, the timing of it. He's trying to say that because this is the worst draft and the worst year for the draft and the worst year for combine invites in the history of the Big Twelve. And everybody, lo- everybody realizes right now it's getting no respect as a conference, and fewer and fewer players are going to want to play in this conference. This league when just needs not- to hurry up the and die. The AAC, the AAC, oh, had more draft picks in the NFL this year than the Big Twelve. That's not even a power five school. It needs to die. And Texas, hey, te- no, hey, I love you, Texas, but you got a part in this too. All right, you got a part in this too. Texas yeah. and that Oklahoma conference just sounds like a fake conference. Texas, Texas, and o- the, Texas, and Texas, Texas and Oklahoma need to figure out what the next step is and be prepared for it. Yeah, because it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when the Big Twelve goes away. Texas is slow dancing in a burning room. They know it's going down. They're just hanging out. They're like, you know, we got on network, so you know, we we're in, hang out, kick we're, it, which is cool. But that's still, you know, that's killing the Big 12. The, they know that. We've entered the month of May, which May and June on the college football calendar should really be conference realignment awareness months. <laughs> Because there's really well there's nothing else to talk well there's nothing else to talk well about. What well, can we nothing look else to talk about? Like I was listening to I was listening to, to Sirius XM on my way home from That's the really doctor good. today, and like Chris Childers and Rick that. Neuheisel, which two guys I, I love their show, but they're yeah. having like heated debates about conference realignment. I'm like. We're not even dealing with this until the TV contracts run out, and that's like no. 2023. Why? Well, just to be it. heated about it is funny. To be heated right. about it, yes. <laughs> it's already happened. Yes, I, I get it. It's, it's the, We have the four major conferences. We know who they are. The Big 12's not a major conference anymore. It's just a matter of what happens it's to just, Texas and yes, Oklahoma. Yeah, Texas where they go? Oklahoma, we're just that's it. They can bring with. And who do who, and Who's who, aligning like, with it's, who? It's like Jerry Maguire. Who's coming with me? Sorry, <laughs> Baylor. Sorry, Texas Tech. Yeah, sorry, you Kansas. You know what, Baylor? You better stop screwing up because right now you're more you're more of a liability. Yeah, which, you uh, may be in the AAC. If going. you look at it. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with uh, the AAC. It's got more draft picks than the Big 12. There you go. Go play with what? UConn? Criminal or wrong. That's where we got our coach. The AAC. The AAC. The ACC is at uh, the ACC is at fourteen teams right now, correct, Matt? Uh, uh, yes, I yeah, I know. I get this mixed basketball. up. There's so many random yes. numbers. So the ACC is at fourteen, and they have the Big Ten. Names. The Big Ten's at fourteen. Big Ten's at fourteen. The, the SEC's Pac- at fourteen. Pac-12's at fourteen, and the Pac-12 is at tw- no. The Pac-12 is at twelve. The Pac-12's at twelve. Oh, okay. So you, we're the, you look at the Pac-12. Pac-12's at twelve. The Pac-12 <laughs> needing to add four. That's two for the Big Ten, two for the ACC, two for the SEC. Oh, we're so going to have realignment discussion. Let's do it. It's eight. May, it's May it's four, conference eight, realignment. Ten. So, ten teams. So, basically, you're looking at just if you think about it like this, and it probably won't be because once you get past a certain level in the Big 12, you're talking about, okay, well, who's really worthy? You're really looking at dissolving the Big 12 and who goes where. Yeah. Because really at this you're point, at. the Big 12, <laughs> it's amazing to me that I mean, they keep lying to our faces. And I. I, I, you know, I, and I was the one that said when they when they said initially, oh, you know what? And it, we were there at Big Twelve Media Days. We're, uh, we're we're contemplating expansion. We're opening up the uh, the interview process to uh, teams for expansion. 
and it was shuffling like, deck chairs on the Titanic. Boom. No, I thought it was. I thought it was all fraudulent, and other teams actually who were in, who were in the interview process or involved in that realignment process. Oh, sorry, the expansion process for the Big Twelve. They have basically said, no, it wasn't really a. They weren't trying to vet us. It wasn't, in our opinions, a re, an authentic uh, interview process <laughs> for expansion. Because I think it was all a a ruse. It was all to distract everybody from the Baylor scandal. That was it. Yeah, but I could see that. And that, it, that was a, that, it, the Baylor scandal had just broke, and it it just Big became a big deal. Days were nuts Big Twelve last media days, year. yeah, it was nuts. And literally, they were like, <laughs> "Man, we need something." Yeah, that it Jim was, Grove, it was get politics one hundred and one. Like it was. Yeah, it Can really I just was. bring this up like, real fast? Yeah, I know Texas fans. Some Texas fans haven't been a proponent of it, but I'm just thinking about this division. And it would be a revamped SEC West division. So yes, God. with Texas, Oklahoma, so Texas A and M, Arkansas, LSU, Auburn, Alabama, Texas and Missouri. Is not going to the SEC. Yeah. What? what? No, because it makes too much sense. That. Or ac- academic prestige. Academic prestige. We might as well start talking about no, Nick Texas Saban doesn't want to lose too. We might as well start talking about Nick Saban in Texas. So Texas ain't going to the SEC. Well, in Texas, Texas, Texas it makes don't too like much the sense. SEC. I know, but it makes Texas too much sense. Texas don't like the culture of the SEC. And Texas, and Texas, wants Texas to align would like to would rather go to more picturesque places. Yes, if they're gonna go somewhere, they're gonna go west. In SEC country, I got people uh, that are swamp people. They don't want to go that way. They want to go west. Go I know west they don't. Though, man. I'm saying what I they want. Going west yes. or they this going is okay. what I want. They this is what I want. Or north. This is what I want. No. I know what Texas wants. No, Rod. Texas ain't. I'm going. very well and aware of what Texas wants. Why would you want to go? Why would you want to do that? Yeah, to I know. Yourself? It's going to be so why tough. Why would you want to? I don't want to go yourself. play in the SEC because you're never going to win again. Yeah, you don't want to That's a that's a loser's defeatist attitude. I don't care, man. No, it's not a loser. It's reality. It's reality. There's no way Texas is going to win that gauntlet. You might go. No, no, no. A bench young team like once every fifty years. You're going to win it every six or seven years. No way. Or five or six years. You're not going to win it consistently. You can go to the Pac-12, or you can go to the Big Ten, and realistically, yes. you can win it every two, or you can win it every two or three years, or go on a run, kind of Alabama or Texas in from 2005 to 2009 kind of run. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you can do that, but you can't. You're not gonna do that in the SEC West, man. You that ain't would gonna, be like how they do like Champions do that. League or you, something. You know, I'm not, you know recruiting. You know where the best talent is in this country. To and the it's southeast. Right it's right there in that little pipeline that goes right down through uh, southeast Texas, right through Louisiana, and to SEC country. The I-10 I corridor. You know it from Texas. And it starts here in Texas, too. I'm just saying. It feeds I, into it. And the SEC's got, they got access to it, man, because of a and This is just, again, this is my, I know what's going to happen. I know what Texas wants. I'm just saying my personal preference. I did that road trip to Cal last year. That was awful. In terms of the travel. Now, Berkeley was beautiful. Exactly. San, San Francisco Bay oh, was beautiful. I'd much rather go sure. to anywhere on the West Coast. Go to go, Boulder, Colorado Guys, is beautiful. I'm like talking about East. my personal preference. I'm gotcha. not saying this is what's going to happen. Okay. I'm not saying gotcha. this is what. I'm just saying, saying the way like through my pr- my prism okay. here. I've got tunnel vision here. You, you this wanna, is what you I want. You want to play fantasy. Uh, fantasy, uh, fantasy booking. Football. That's all we can do. What am I going to do for the next six well, years? Well, I'm just telling you, that's not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen. Jeff doesn't care. He's just let me think. This is his okay. utopian let me, Longhorn environment. Let me, let me die on this hill, Rod. Please, right. can I die on this hill I and guess just we can do it. be happy thinking about I Texas didn't... and the SEC? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't even sound right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't even sound right. It sounds weird. I know it's Go probably going to be the Pac-12 the or the Big Ten. Because the Big Ten because makes of more A&M sense. Alone. Because of what A&M did alone. We ain't following A and M. What? Can you imagine Texas following A and M? It's not following A and M. It's following oh, you know, spin it. That's what the but narrative would be. Perception is reality. That's what the narrative would be. Oh, look who copied. Look what who we was did. right. A and M was yeah, right for it. Yeah, we did. No hell, no, man. That ain't happening. Screw the Aggies. Let them Texas be Aggies. Texas will go over independent there. instead of doing that. They can go to the deep south and we'll head west just like Durant did. It works out perfect. Let's play your game. All right, let's go. No, that's it. That's just I've been thinking about like Texas, Texas in the same division with, because I mean you got be awesome. you've really got your three natural your 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 three your I two your, your two your three natural rivals A&M. OU A&M, and Arkansas all in the same division. Oh, yeah, I can't, I Plus yeah. I mean LSU Auburn Alabama and then just be- throw Missouri in there because you got to have somebody else in there. I don't know. <laughs> Don't nobody care about Missouri anyway, so. Um, and they're just, in the you're, East right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, just throw them back in the West. Nick Saban's now being paid $11 million a year. Which is so. nuts. Which is the highest paid football coach in the NFL or college. On par with and Popovich. Popovich I, gets 11. I believe now. Oh, does he get? Because well, he's GM, coach. too. I said football coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's just, I, that's yeah. the elite do, company he's in. Nobody gets, knows what Belichick gets. So, no. 
Well, yes, yeah, true. They know what he gets. They know what he gets as a football a football coach, but not as what he gets as the GM. Exactly. In the front so office that's head. where he may yeah, eclipse it, somebody it, like Popovich or Saban. But that's insane. Um, but it is insane. I mean, I think yeah, Harbaugh is what at nine million. It's Do insane. we need to see Bill Belichick's tax Ooh. returns? Is that what you're saying? Uh, n- no, because I know he earned it. I know. <laughs> uh, I, no, 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 that wasn't not a political <laughs> joke. <laughs> I'm no, I'm not no, trying to throw no, a ride no, under the no, bus. No, that was not meant to be political. No, no so. but uh, <laughs> no, the saving the saving thing is interesting because if you let's just kind of. Work backwards here. If you think back to when the Saban and the Texas rumors were flying around, uh, the, one Man, of the things, that one of the m- the many things yeah. we heard was Texas did not want to be the first school to pay a head coach ten million dollars a year. They didn't want to set that precedent mm. of paying that head coach a lot of money. Um, and, 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 but this 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 oh, the Saban thing is interesting I hope that though. Wasn't the reason the Saban thing is interesting though because if you look at I guess it all depends on what side you're looking at it. If you're looking I, at I could it, give a about all that. Excuse my French. If if you're looking at it from a purely football prism, you can definitely make the argue that yes, he's worth every penny of that eleven million. And oh, it, and at eleven yeah. million, Nick Saban might be underpaid. You can make that argument. No doubt. If you're it's looking, like LeBron with the max salaries God. in the NBA, right. he's drastically underpaid. If you're looking at it through the prism of academics and amateurism, you'd say, how the heck can you pay? You know when. Universities are having funding issues or what have you. How can you pay a state employee eleven million dollars a year? So it's it's all depend on how you look at it. But for this, for the purpose of our show, the way I'm gonna look at it, I'm looking at it through purely a football prism, mm-hmm. and I'm right. saying Nick Saban is worth every penny. And at eleven million, yeah, I think you can definitely make the argument, and I do think he's probably underpaid at eleven million because what Nick because Nick Saban at this point is Alabama football, Alabama football. Could, would Al- the things are cyclical. Would Alabama be really good? Yes. Would Alabama be the monster that it is, the behemoth it is right now without Nick Saban? I don't think there's any way. Um, Alabama football at this point, and there, there are a few blue blood college football programs that have become this in the sports industrial complex. They're their own separate economies. Mm-hmm. They really are. Yeah, like they are uh, the most powerful in the they, state. Almost is what Alabama is. Yeah, I mean they have their <laughs> own separate economies. They generate so much revenue just off the events that happen, and then what they do TV for money. Yeah. yeah, for people that want to be uh, in terms of being a social agent, you go out to watch the games, you yeah. go to bars, you you know you eat, you order pizza, whatever it is. Like the just the revenue generated from oh, there's an Alabama game today. What's everybody, you know what I mean? Like, and there are, of course, online entities that follow it. Uh, Longhorn football is the same way. I mean, in this sports industrial complex, Longhorn football is its own separate economy. Horns 247 is a, is, is, is a prime example of that. Mm-hmm. Like it, you know what I mean, I there mean, are so many people, people downtown yeah. for the games, so much exactly. money comes in. There are so many people right now, exactly, that make their money strictly uh, based on Longhorn football. Yeah, you and the I mean? thing is, is when you look at <laughs> Alabama, What's even crazier is you're totally right about that, but within context to the state, Texas, there's a lot of things in Austin or in Houston or Dallas, massive oil companies, huge business and infrastructure that brings in. When you look at some of these schools inside their states and compare what Alabama to what the rest of the state does and how much it creates just per capita to the area, it's an immense amount. It's actually insane when you look at it, yeah. LSU, and then even Mississippi. Yeah. Right. I don't think we need to sit here and justify no, why Nick Saban is paid. No, no, no. Paid. But it's crazy. Th- there, there is a conflict, of course. Right. There is because, you know, we're talking about amateurism and there are young men out there. Um, I used to be one of them who are not getting paid yeah, which for their should. services. They essentially are getting trade. Right. And Did there's you, a discussion uh, about it. I don't think we've ever covered this. Did you get in on the class action lawsuit for with EA Sports, or did you miss that? I missed, missed it by a year. I missed it by a year, yes. Okay. It was 2000. Uh, yeah, the four th- kids four cut through or, or three. something. Yep, it was yeah, right and I there. missed it by a year. So whatever, whatever it was, you missed that cut I missed it by a year. year. Okay. Which is, honestly, and I got to tell you, this is how I know it's a very, uh, you know, I mean, it's a complicated issue, the pay-for-play thing. Maybe I, it may be the most complicated issue, arguably, in sports right now. Like, how are you going to do We all know these young men are being exploited uh right. we all but we just don't really know what to do uh, yeah because it got out of control like over 50 like all, years you let it go yeah, downhill yeah. for 50 years and exactly. now you're stuck with this like i said it's kind of like healthcare. we all knew it was an issue we just don't really know what to do about it you know what i mean uh, somebody's got to figure out the plan somebody really smart will will at one point but the the, the point is i about the game now as a 36 year old man 
I would rather have the video game than the three thousand dollar check. That you would have you know got. I mean? Like it's, it's but, cool but, having your yeah, in your. But game. as a twenty one year old, yeah, I'd be like, hey, give me my check, man. I want my check. I yep. want three G's. Give me my three thousand, and I would have spent it on I don't know a couple of dates. Uh, a couple of trips to the strip club and a couple of you know tacos. I Might mean, have I don't got know what the hell I spent it on. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it'd be it'd be gone. And I you know I pay taxes on it, whatever. I don't know what, how they'd work it out. But my point is now I'm like, damn, how often would I have a chance to get on a video game? I gladly would trade in that that money to That's be on the cool, video game because nostalgic now I can bring that out. Day. If I have a son, which I hope I will have, or a kid, I can I literally bring out. A, they have resources now. Break out the game console and say, "Hey, this That's is me. your this is your papa right here playing right here." We're like, oh, this is stupid. They're like, hey, you gonna be you gonna play it? You know I mean? That's like, why Matt and I got you a game console for yes, Christmas. Yes, you know what I mean. Share like, it forever. So I I know it's a, it's a complicated issue. I understand. That. Com- I don't know. I don't want to spend like, too much more yeah. time on this, but like I'm. The T-ring, I just, I love I pulled this. Yeah. Uh, I pulled this story back up from last October, uh, using football programs revenue data provided by the Department of Education and the NFL's most recent collective bargaining agreement. Business Insider estimates that the fair market value for an average Texas football player is six hundred seventy-one thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars. Boom! Straight cash. God, homie. if you're paying that to him, that'd yeah. be awesome. Give me my money, man. Yeah. Hundred-dollar handshakes. I never got any of those. For the no. I never got even a five dollar handshake, or even a dollar handshake, actually. So how do you think, like, uh, <laughs> not even a free drink at the bar? I stole my chicken fries. No steak from chicken. the uh, yeah, <laughs> from the uh, from how, my kitchen and mess hall. How do you think, yeah. uh, you know, you go over, you probably go over to the athletic dining hall in the north end zone right now and go up to Malik Jefferson, just grab a player and say, hey, you realize you're worth six hundred and seventy G's? Mm-hmm. And that's not even winning games. Yeah. <laughs> that's in the I that's know, in the imagine communist it, version. Imagine, yeah, exactly. If, it was a they, meritocracy. Yeah, imagine when Tom Herman gets to the national title, you, what they're gonna be do worth. Do you feel like you're worth six hundred and seventy grand? You should buy right now. You buy low, sell high. So right now the brand is you know, so buy you should be buying and, stock. Buy yeah, that's stock. why they I've heard some good ideas yeah. just hearing different people throw them against the wall, but like if you did have some little baseline and wanted to get incentivize like how there used to be all the coaches that get their different types of uh bonuses or a bowl game bonus or like how you get gifts for them if those things went to the kids so then you had the motivation to play well and go there by the end and then like it's still so tough to figure out the way some old people need to figure it out and disperse those hundreds of millions of dollars they missed their opportunity this was a it's a pr nightmare they they should have been ahead of the curve they should have started giving them you know that that free snacks thing Hell, man, you should have been giving them free snacks for years. You know well, what I mean? and be- like, or like before this the, report came out and give out, say, okay, pay them all twenty thousand a year, exactly. so you look good, oh, and then and you know on boom. the front end you're getting actually get ahead of uh, it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, they're at, they're at move at this glacier like pace. It's like, hey, every it, it's out now. It's like everybody understands. We people are well uh, informed. They are now knowledgeable about the subject. They know you are exploiting the athletes. Just give them right. more. Exactly. We now they want value this, and reparations. Yeah, give us more. Multi, you know, billion dollar pie. Just give them some. The, give them a little bit. The days of Rod B stealing chicken fried steaks from the dining hall need to end. Yes, you know <laughs> what I mean. Like I should have had to steal chicken fried steak. I, hey, I did, but it, you know what? It paid off. But, yeah, uh, I know don't what? know if they're going to be. You know what? Though, well honestly, nerd. not to get us too far off on a tangent, man. Cafeteria chicken fried steak is underrated. What? Oh, yeah? Dude, I love it. I'll tell you what. I don't know. You know, this, and this is bad because I love cafeteria food. Luby's is among my favorite things to eat in the world. I don't eat enough right now because my girlfriend does not like Luby's. But I love <laughs> old Luby's. Old school cafeteria. Man, and I don't think it's for old people. I was sitting there with all them 60, uh, 70 year old folks and Get eating Luby's all day special every day. At like 4 o'clock. It's so nourishing. And. About chicken fried steak, they got both types of gravy, white and brown. I don't know why you restaurants out there, if anybody's listening, have only one type of gravy, white or brown. You need to have both types of gravy. Agreed. Brown gravy matters, too. I just ridiculous so that's how having you, only white gravy. So is that how you know oh, yeah. you're in a classy gravy establishment when, when you get something with gravy and they say white or brown? <laughs> <laughs> that's classy Ooh. for yeah. Rodby. Oh, uh, dang. That's a good point. While yeah. we're on the you, you get brown, you get brown gravy on the potatoes. There's a fat guy I know this. You get brown gravy on get brown gravy, brown gravy on, the gravy on the potatoes, white gravy on the meat. I don't like white gravy, but I feel you though. Yeah, yeah I'm not a white gravy man. If I'm you're gonna if you're man. if you're gonna do a white it's gravy not a on the meat, thing at all. brown <laughs> gravy on the potatoes. Because I like the white meat. I like white women. Yeah, see, you like the white meat. I like all women. I ain't just a white. And then you like the brown gravy. Oh, with brown women, black women. So if you were to have some. 
chicken that would be the black meat chicken with cream gravy, that's the total opposite of your preference. I don't drink or really consume white condiments of any kind. White liquid things I pretty much reject. That's ranch, blue cheese. No white like liquid, mayonnaise but white count? meat. Mayonnaise is in that conversation, too. Ranch. What ranch. about, like, Miracle Whip? Boom, also yeah. in that conversation. Mm. I, vanilla ice cream, all that, none of that. Oh, yeah. ice cream's different. I didn't know it would add it mm. into the creamy. It's something about the white cream So is that thing. all ice cream? No, it's, if, it get, if it gets white and creamy, so if I it's green, it. like mint just, chocolate chip, you'll eat. Let's just get into a real psychological thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we should go into Rod Pee just right Rod Rod went down a rabbit think, hole. He's not comfortable going I don't down. Think we should I think he is comfortable. He's volunteering no, no, more no, and more. No, no, I didn't know that. We just thought I was like, no, oh, I know a lot of guys. You guys want to get back to the draft? I want to get back to the draft. This is making me a little uncomfortable. I don't like this. Rod, real quick. Jeff looked at me and I was like, no, this is not good. I don't want to turn this into a Houston Texans podcast where we're talking about gravy and pay for play and everything else. Um, oh, I got a Texans. Oh, how about this? Okay, keep talking. Go, no, go for it. Um, Rod, as a Texans fan, you know the Texans more than anybody in this room. Um, there it goes. Off? Yeah. Hey, why don't we have Longhorn Lucha Libre match? We've already, we've already, we've already gone through this. I know, but I want, I want to put it out there again because I want one of these for Mike Perrin. If you're listening, Greg Finn is no. somebody. Uh, yeah, co-op. somebody in Chris Plonsky, somebody in licensing. Co-op. Get Let's after it. it. Okay, go ahead. Lamar Miller, we know the Texans wanted a running back to lighten his workload a little bit. What would you say the chance? Like, what role, kind of role could Deontay Foreman play as a rookie? Uh, oh, Deontay Foreman will see the field uh, before Desha- Deshaun Watson. I mean, he'll see the field in game one. Yeah. A- a- he really will. I mean, it'll be like Atlanta last year with their two headed back system, yeah, I think, will be most comparable. That is exactly what most people uh, envision for Deontay Foreman. They basically want him to be a compliment for Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller is supposed to be the back that can pretty much do everything that he can receive the out of the Tevin backfield. Tevin Coleman version. Yeah, that he can get to, you know, the outside on the perimeter. He can also, you know, run inside if you need him to. He can be that kind of jack of all trades. And Deontay Foreman, although I think people are sleeping on his receiving skills uh-huh. just because Sterling Gilbert didn't utilize him that way doesn't mean he can't do it. Right. Um, I think the Texans they'll 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 try to maximize that a little bit more. But with with Deontay Foreman, they want a guy that can basically kind of reset the line of scrimmage for them on that running game, and they can you know kind of run downhill with someone. Mm-hmm. Lamar Miller's not that durable either. Lamar Miller's no. one of those guys where you know pretty much every year. I mean he's he he's very productive. Not saying that, but he's He's gonna miss a game or two. There's gonna be a nick. He's gonna miss a game miss two or last two. Season. He missed. It's pretty much. I don't know. I mean, every year he almost has. Yeah, I mean, if you're a fantasy guy, you pretty much know how it goes. But he's gonna miss a game or two over there. But he's very productive. Yep. And that's when your Deontay Foreman's gonna step up and get a start. And we know Deontay Foreman. One thing about him. He maximizes opportunities. Yeah. Remember the few times we saw him, like, his uh, sophomore year? Mm-hmm. His true freshman Charlie, year. A true Even freshman his first year, game was, like, two Charlie, for 39. Yeah, when Charlie Strong didn't play him. And we're like, yo, this guy, this guy's productive. What are you doing? Or what are you looking at? He he does. He maximizes opportunities. So I think the few times that people see him, they that he flashes for the Texans, they're going to go, like, man, we got to see more of him. That's always been the case since we've known Deontay Foreman. We got to see more of him. You know what I like about uh, – what I like about – what I think the Texans will like about Deontay Foreman, I should say, is unlike some bigger backs, he doesn't need like carries to get into a rhythm. No, that's one thing I, I, I grew to appreciate about him. Is it's yeah. like boom, w- once he hits the field, he's ready to go. And that's you, good. That's a good you don't point. see I that, like that. You don't see that from bigger backs that often. That. It's like, and then like they, Chris Warren's one of those guys that he needs. He needs a few carries to get going yeah. and, and kind of get a rhythm. I think of like Eddie George. Eddie George is always even Jonathan the, Gray was see, like those that. Those workhorse yeah. backs. I think like when you follow just like the actual like platooning of the like, NFL systems. Like now it seems like because you have the short spurts and guys platooning and more specialized that you don't have that as much because you don't have those workhorse backs that are being That's asked true. to do all these different things. What some of which may not be their strength. So that may be that work growing pains till you figure out what you do in each game. Uh, I do want to mention, though, cause some people on Facebook Live are asking recruiting questions. We don't cover recruiting on this show because at Horns 24-7, we now have a recruiting-specific podcast. So just want to throw no. it out there. Uh, EJ Holland and Mike Roach have a great podcast with one of the best podcast titles out there. No interviews, please. Like you always see recruits where they tweet out when they commit or decommit from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or it says they tag it with no interviews, please. So they decide to call it a recruiting podcast. No interviews, please. I like it. Um, you <laughs> can find that on Twitter uh, at no interviews pod. 
Uh, it's also on the Horns Cast channel at Horns Cast, and I believe that's Horns Cast on iTunes. Do they ever do iTunes. interviews? Also, they do have interviews nice. on. I like it. <laughs> that, that was my first question. Yeah. <laughs> so we won't talk a ton of recruiting on this. We probably will every now and then, but uh, no interviews, Just, please, is where you can find all your Longhorn recruiting information. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the guys that didn't get drafted. Texas with only one drafted. Rod, here's something though hey. that kind of it, it almost wears me out when people talk about. Oh, Texas only had one guy drafted. Like. Did you just expect like this plethora of draft picks to just suddenly fall yeah, out of the sky? I mean, like, like we've seen this coming. We've talked yeah. about this. We yeah. sat here last year and said, you know, I don't know, maybe. And the conversation at this time last year was, I don't know, maybe Kent Perkins, maybe if Deontay Foreman has a big year, can go pro early. Next, the mm-hmm. 2017 draft isn't going to be much better. Guess what, yeah. folks? Unless Connor Williams goes pro or Malik Jefferson has a big year, 2018 isn't going to be much better. This is very true. Uh, I've seen a lot of. I know. Tw- I know. Like it's a, la- it's a lazy narrative. Is what I'm saying. 2018. I've seen a lot of mock drafts. Oh, yeah, Not Connor. them anything, but Connor Williams and Malik Jefferson have been featured in right. almost all of the 2018 mock drafts that I've seen. And it, yeah, Connor most of Williams them have just been, for sure. yeah, and Connor Williams for sure. So Connor Williams is one of the top three best offensive tackles in the country right now. Like just right. sitting in his living room watching Netflix. He is one of the top three old tackles in the country right Could now. Could not play college for a year or something. Yeah, probably he, still he, he, he's that. That's that's how highly people think of him. So I do think that's a little satisfaction that's coming. But what is the number? Is it seven in the last four years? Players that have been drafted. Uh, three. Long th- ones? Think about this: three of the last four drafts, yeah. Texas has had one or fewer players drafted. Yeah. So it's uh, you know this is part of the issue. Listen, there are fewer players being drafted overall in the Big Twelve, and this is why I say you know Texas has a you know, a hand and a responsibility in the death of the Big 12, essentially. It's because it's the premier brand. The, the, the fu- you can you can track the fall of the Big 12 and the fall of Texas. Yeah. They almost coincide right. And then same together. with the draft production, <laughs> yeah, because like, it's like exactly. how we were saying. Two, it's like 2009, 2010. Big 12's awesome. And it's like, Le- and last <laughs> show, show, we were just talking about how the cycles, it seemed like it's there from 20 years ago in the 90s, how all the out-state kids or in-state yeah. kids were going out of state. And then you look at the draft numbers, and when was the last time Texas had this few of players drafted? It correlates with on-field success. It was whenever you yeah. weren't as successful at the end of the McAvick era. So it seems obvious to point out, but it really does correlate. Yeah, you don't talk about the recruiting. Maybe you brought up the recruiting point about Jamal Adams. Solomon Thomas, 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 Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. You, know you I mean? win, you, you make you those get guys. one of those guys. Yeah, out of the three, you got to get one of them, and Texas couldn't get any of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's 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 part of it. One of the, that, those, are, those are defensive guys who transform your defense. And that's they like get, the one mean? you did get, Malik, you barely got at the last moment because you Good weren't point. even winning. You just you, barely stole you, him away. You think yeah. about the guys in the 2013 class Texas either had or led on, missed on, is Deshaun Hall, Ashawn Robinson, you know Andrew, I mean? Andrew oh, yeah. Billings. Come on now. In first two, rounder, first rounder. There's a couple yeah, of those. in 2005, 4 and 5, in 2008 and 9, Texas has – I don't know the major eighty percent of those guys, and look at those defenses. They're yeah, stacked. They're like you know. And, and, and the bottom line is, since two, since the start of two thousand thirteen, Texas is what twenty four and twenty six as a program. Is, so yeah, I it, mean, it's, there it's, is definitely a connection. It there. didn't it didn't get broke overnight. It's not going to get fixed overnight. But things are going to look up. But let's look at the guys that yeah. weren't drafted. Uh, Deontay Foreman is the only guy drafted. Um, it's interesting because I think these guys, and, and not to say that guys previously haven't done it, it seems like these guys have signed free agent deals really did their homework on teams. And I know from talk, kind of talking to Caleb Blewett's family, I know they did. They looked at how many tight ends do you carry? How many, you know, what's the age of these tight ends? Hmm, Are guys going to fall off? You know, do you have a chance to maybe make a practice squad? And kind of compared it because there were, I think, three teams that were that had contracts prepared to sign Caleb Blewett. He signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Nice. Uh, Kent Perkins. Had some interest from you know, the Raiders and the Eagles. He chose to sign with the Cincinnati Bengals, who are hurting for offensive linemen right now. It was not a very deep offense. If it you was, were looking for offensive line help in the draft, this was not your year. It was year. a really bad offensive line draft. Well, I would say bad, but it w- there was not a lot of talent. And not deep, not top heavy, and not deep either. Yeah, so, so, yeah, not very good. And so Kent Perkins signs with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Seattle Seahawks have been interested in Tyrone Swoops from the beginning of his draft process. He signs with the Seahawks, which is a really Man. it's an interesting team for oh, him to I go to. Oh, I think yeah, organizationally and, there couldn't be a better fit. And what I was Agreed. told, they're interested Agreed. in looking at him as a kind of a goal line, short yardage quarterback option, mm-hmm. number one, and number two, a guy that can be a developmental guy behind Jimmy Graham. Yeah, I know. No, I mean, <laughs> remember that. This is kind of an organization. I mean, they're very progressive. 
right. I should say. So I think it's great. I think they could, they're they really looking and trying to develop him behind Jimmy Graham, who's also was developmental. And that was one of the one. names you know that I mean? we brought up whenever I was trying to find just a physical comparison. And that was three weeks Man. ago on the show. We drew those specs together, who's, and they're very – him and Julius Thomas were the two most similar. Trevor and Boykin. Is, is Trevor and Boykin still with He's them? Their He's backup, still on yeah. the roster, yeah. After but, all the yeah. issues? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have not seen I wonder who I their third. I would say he's on pretty thin ice, though. Yeah, look who our third-string quarterback is. It's so weird that, he, you know, Tyrone Sousa might start out as an experimental quarterback and then some crazy things would happen. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, listen, Garrett Gilbert was really close to— The same to, way that Russell Wilson got the job? Yeah, well, Mike Flint, Matt Flynn was signed to be the free yeah, agent but, starter, and then he took over in the preseason. No, Not, he, nothing he, against Tyrone Sousa, but I'm saying Russell Wilson, I think, has like that 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 true— You drafted yeah, yeah. him as a ability. quarterback. Well, well I'm, I'm talking about like a guy that like— happened for him. People don't know this, but when the Texans played the Raiders in the playoffs last year, I believe Garrett Gilbert, Garrett Gilbert was signed with the Raiders as an emergency yep. quarterback. Remember, because— Derek Carr got hurt, and then was it uh, Matt McGloin also yep, yeah. got hurt, and they were down uh, to Connor Cook, I believe. Yeah. And their second street quarterback was Garrett Gilbert, and I kept saying, man, not that I was hoping for, I was like, man, it would be really crazy if Garrett Gilbert ends up coming to this game and doing something crazy like beating the Texans. Yeah, because like, he was on the d- freaking out. They would yeah. be freaking out, you know. But that's the kind of crazy stuff that happens in the NFL, you know what right. I mean? So I'm just saying Tyron Swoops is there, and they like him. They just like Julian like Edelman was the guy behind Jacoby Brissett whenever he was injured and Garoppolo was wondering, like, you were about to have your wide receiver playing. Right. Former it's college QB. Crazy. It's like a Seneca Wallace type thing, but yeah. the different position. Especially with a quarterback that runs. And all Seattle Seahawks quarterbacks Ring run. Right. You know what I mean? Like uh, Anyway, sorry. So which of those guys do you like to maybe stick around, though? Caleb Blewett? Kent Perkins, Tyrone Swoops, Paul Boyette signed a free agent deal with the Raiders. Oh, nice. So those four really. Dylan uh, Haynes to do anything? We'll talk about those. We'll talk about him in a minute. But those four guys, Boyette, Boyette with the Raiders, Swoops with the Seahawks, Perkins with the Bengals, Blew it with the Jaguars. Which do you think has the best chance to stick around? Mm. Perkins with the Bengals is intriguing yeah. to me. To me it, it is, It really is because the Bengals love to take. The Bengals, okay, the Bengals love – they have the island of misfit toys, and they love a bargain. Like they love a bargain. Like they love somebody. And Ken Perkins is one of those guys. He's got a versatile skill set in the line. He can give them a lot of bang for their buck. Bengals are all about bang for their. They're cheap. Only the brand they family. can get a margin. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. Notoriously, just a really cheap fan. That's why they like Vontez Burfick the Adam Jones. Like, oh, these guys screwed up. That makes them really, really. They're cheap. cheaper. Yeah, they're cheaper. So and they may come to Cincinnati. Yeah, you gotta make them come there. So too. <laughs> I, I really like that fit, especially if they are in need of offensive linemen. He's a guy that's versatile, can play multiple positions for him. I don't know where they need him at guard, I'm assuming. Think um, about this. It could be a situation where maybe they like Kent Perkins so much it costs Trey Hopkins his job. Oh, I forgot he was there. Yeah, because it's getting to be about the time, 14, 15, 16. There this will be go. Trey Hopkins' fourth year in the league. This is when you need to yeah. kind of see something that yeah. you've, you've invested. And the Bengals have shown they'll, they'll invest time in a prospect. No, they, they, will. they did that with Trey Hopkins going mm-hmm. into his fourth year, but now it's like, okay, hey, because take that leap, if, Kent, per- that if Kent Perkins is better, Rod, because he's a rookie compared to a fourth year, yeah, he's going to be cheaper. Way cheaper. So – Way cheaper. Could be the Kemp Perkins that's of cost and Trey Hopkins a job. It's like, we're developing this guy. Why not develop a younger guy? Exactly. You know what I mean, for cheap. I agree with that. You know what I mean? So that's a good point. I didn't. Tyrone Soups is my second. I love that Tyrone. I love, I love Tyrone Soups at tight end in the league, man. I, I think. It's sexy. I, 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 keep, I keep going back to the kind of guy Caleb Blewett is, and now that Tom Coughlin's running that thing down there in Jacksonville, Caleb Blewett strikes me as a guy Tom Coughlin would like. He likes tough guys, and Caleb Blue's a tough guy. He is a tough guy. Tom Coffin's all about <laughs> tough sure. guys. Yeah, he, 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 that's like why, he, why he likes Leonard Fournette. Like, I want a tough guy. Just burn people over. Yeah. yeah. Blue, it's the kind yeah, of guy. Bucky he's, Gobbled had some old Coughlin stories. Yeah, you know, on that Boston College stuff. Coughlin's yeah. a guy that he's old school. You know, I mean, Blue, it's a guy that he'll, you know, he'll understand Coughlin time. That if you're on time, you're late. Mm-hmm. So that he'll, just that type of workman blue he'll, collar mentality. He'll, he'll make he'll he'll turn some heads on special teams when he gets a shot. We know he's unselfish because he'll have he'll they'll have him on special teams. They'll just like his body type, you know. What I mean, depending on you know how they use him. Yeah, I can see that. You know, so, they want to run and he can block. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens with those guys. Uh, the other two guys, Dylan Haynes has tryouts with the Jets and the Texans. Oh, nice! When rookie camp tryouts like to that. make it to mini camp. And Jonathan Gray is getting a rookie camp tryout with the Giants. Man, everybody's rooting for Jonathan Gray. Yeah. How can you not be rooting for Jonathan Gray right now? If you don't, you have no soul. Man, that's You have that's no a heart thing. if you don't, man. 
Yeah. You know, but man, yeah, I like. Yeah, that's a great story. That's a great story. I just. I think just can't for Jay, for Jay Gray to just be getting this chance. I agree. Says a lot. Good and, for him. Yeah. I mean, he deserves it. He deserves it. I think we all agree that it it was unfortunate. I mean, football is a cruel game. Period. For a lot to a lot of people, it was uh, unfortunately cruel to him. Considering you both know, shoulders was, repaired, yeah. mm-hmm. two Achilles tears. Yeah, it's just for a guy who did everything he could for the team and never really was can seem like a selfish player at all. And yeah, a lot of high mileage at an early age for that guy. That's and coming in. It's that's a great a big part. Point, man. He got, he got those backs. snaps. You have your yeah. life amount of snaps. You, and always, his high yeah. school snaps. I mean, he had four years of running insane high school snaps. Nothing wrong with it. It's just if you're going to run that much, it's going to cut off on the back end. What I always say, you got a certain amount of snaps in your life, man. Get paid for You're them running. You're looking like a 25 year old man instead of yeah. a 20 year old man at that age. Get paid for them as soon as possible. It's just the reality. It's football. All right, I've got two questions I want to pose to you guys with the time we got left. And uh, as soon as we're done here, uh, I've got to go do some video work for CBS Sports. Nice. nice. And the two questions that Coming are posed. On up. Two of the questions that were posed to me that we're going to discuss this week with CBS are uh, the oh. the most indispensable players on the Texas roster, the most indispensable player on offense, and the most indispensable oh. player That's on easy. defense. That's easy. Okay, Rod is the easy. Was, who's the on easy offense? pick on offense? Shane Bouchel. See, I I think Shane Bouchel and Connor Williams are one A one B. Y'all got both of mine. I was gonna go mm. Bouchel then Williams. You could go Williams, but because if you lose Connor Williams, sort of you, d- you don't have anybody that comes anywhere oh. close in terms of talent Thank level you. at the most important position on the offense. At least you have a guy that, that can throw still. Yeah, I would say Shane Bouchel's the easy answer. Yep. But Connor Williams, I'd agree with you. If you if you're a Longhorn fan and you watch Longhorn football, you can easily argue Connor Williams nationally. For people to get it, Shane Michelle's the easy answer. But you can go Connor Williams. That's, totally that's more agree. intriguing. That's a, that's a sexier. People are like, oh, is that Shane Michelle? So if you're just, I don't know, you, you asking our opinion of what yeah, you can say? Yeah. Oh, I would, yeah, Connor, Connor Williams is a hotter take. If you're just talking about the, 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 the world of sports, you know, entertainment. I think that's they're a hotter I, take. I think they're like, 1A and 1B. Yeah, I mean, people will go sh- With you can Bouchelle go being 1A yeah. or with Williams being. Doesn't matter. Well, I, I mean, know, but I'm saying that's where the classifying, you know I was I mean? wondering if it did matter. Yeah. So you're saying just tied for five. Okay, I would, okay I would, you know what? Okay, I agree with this. Go Connor Williams because that's a hotter take. And you go, well, because Sam Elling is there and he fits the offense better anyway. So if Shane's not there, we still got Sam. Yeah, bigger Boom! drop off between the one and two. Take. That's Matt hit it. Matt hit it where you can make, you don't have to just, it's not necessarily the quote unquote hot take. It's the sensible argument, which the drop off from Bouchelle to Ellinger, I don't think is as steep as Connor Williams to whoever your number two left tackle is. Yep. It's still the hot take. Like you at take, least you have two well, quarterbacks you though, like to that. get hit hard. You gotta hit say hard. it like Skip Bayless or Stephen A. Smith, man. You can't say I ain't it like going that. that well, the rational thing to do would be to drop it. They drop off rates between and one and two. And then explode. Like no, then you yell gotta, and flail my arms. Boom, and then you gotta give him like the. I pity the fool. Crotch, you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the crotch, crotch shot. shot. Yeah, man. You got that's what you gotta do. That's what people want to see Go, these days, uh, man. G- what was it? What was the the Generation X? Who were those? Yeah, NWA style. Yeah, you gotta lay it down. Be like boom. I'm not long for this business, am I? Man, I'm trying to get you. You, I'm trying to get you to maximize your talent, man. Thank you, Rod. You go big time. I, I That's how you do that. it. Go in there and just go off. If I, if it's, if it's between me going mm-hmm. big time and me making a fool of myself, then I'd just rather stay right here on the bus <laughs> with you guys. Dude, you can turn shame to fame and fame to fortune in this world. Remember that. <sighs> Thanks. I, I'll file that. Kardashians away, proved it. Yeah. Oh gosh. Let's just think about something else. <laughs> All right. Go but ahead. No, Second I mean, question. The, no, the, but the, you know. If you think about it from that standpoint, it, it, let's take Connor Williams away from the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And what is the Texas offensive line at that point? To me, it gets very average, very fast. Not it below may be average. below average. I was yeah. going to say below average, yeah. actually. Yeah. If he if he if he's not there, who do you even put it? Who, who do you even put it left tackle if Connor Williams goes out? Well, then you you actually risk hurting whoever the quarterback is anyway. I mean, now at least you have a, kind of a a rock. There, uh, you know, a, a consistent player. You go, all right. You know what? If if worse come to worse, and they got a really, really, you know, dominant pass rush coming against us, we can build a game plan to block around this guy because we know they can't get around this guy and protect our quarterback. And if you take away Connor Williams at that point, you play against any team that's got a pretty good pass rush. Man, yeah, the fit's gonna hit the chain. You screwed. Yeah. So. Ask the same question about Shane Bouchelle. If Shane Bouchelle, if something were to happen to Shane Bouchelle, Bouchelle, yeah, something were to happen to Shane Bouchelle, 
Let me ask you guys this. We'll talk about this on what is today, the third. Today's May third. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the ceiling for this team? All parts as is. Assume Chris Warren gets back, or you've got a, a running back, at least one guy you can rely on. The ceiling for the what team. What is the ceiling for this team? All things Ooh. equal. Oh, I'd say ceiling. What is the, the ceiling for this team? I'll I think say like, oh, as nine, good as Oklahoma, like nine I, or ten games. I was gonna say I was gonna say nine wins is the ceiling for me, but. You could go 10 because yeah. if you're talking about ceiling, uh, okay, ceiling is 10 wins. The ceiling is 10. 10 but and 10 a realistic, realistic is 8 to 9. Yeah. Because realistic, they're going to lose to USC. They're going to lose to both Oklahoma schools with veteran quarterbacks who potentially could be Heisman um, candidates. And because they're just a new team with a new system, new schemes, new coaching, new everything, then maybe they could lose another game. But – and Kim Kardashian, Nicki Minaj, Serena Williams, sauce, but Tom Herman is known for what he did at U of H, where when he inherits talent, which he has more talent here, he hasn't really admitted that, but I think I would say he has more talent here. I think he's kind of uh, hinted at that. He's inherited more talent here than he did at U of H, mm-hmm. and I think, in, in, but he's going against Power Five schools in the Big right. Twelve. But the Big 12, the AAC, it's actually a little on par with the Big 12. A few of the coaches from the AAC have now come to the Big 12. It may not be that different in competition level, just so you're throwing it out there, considering University of Texas. So I would say that he should win nine games with University of Texas. That, that, the eight, nine games right now. That, that eighth loss, that, I'm sorry, that, that fourth loss would, it would surprise me. I can't really see who it is right now. Yeah, because you always right? have like I mean when you look across they got all K State at home, so that you know that trip to Manhattan could, always concerns you on the schedule. K State could do it. You're right; it's a purple kryptonite, so that could easily be it. Because but the fact look, that that game's in Austin makes you feel better about that. What are the other you know going to West Virginia is one that uh, they lose a lot. Yeah, it's tough to go they up lost, there. They lost a lot though. They yeah, lost, a lost lot. Howard. You Howard know, actually lot, said Seattle. A lot is going to depend on health for this team too. I mean, Chris Warren, something happened. Um, something happens to you know one of the key guys. I won't mention names. Something happens to one of the key guys. Um, you know, especially at you know key positions like that, it could it could really derail things Spe- on defense too. You know what I mean? Because as Tom Herman puts it, they're not deep. Or he he would say they're not deep. Which you know what I mean. I don't know if I agree with that really. But. Deeper than probably what he has inherited. So when you look, and then you look at the rest of the conference, may not be the deepest year for the I, Big 12. So that's where when okay. you look at every single team overall, like you normally have uh, at least one game where you underperform, no matter how good you are, even if you win the championship. You're going to underperform in a game. So you hope that that happens in the right game that you can survive okay. so then you can get that 9 or 10. Okay, so – you guys just decided the ceiling is realistically eight or nine. If you want to go best case scenario, yeah. probably ten. Yeah. Oh, take yeah. take Shane Bouchelle out of the equation okay. for a significant stretch. Or define significant. Yeah. Is it three, three games, games, four, five, say, yeah, half games. the season, whatever? Games, yeah. You could lose all of them. What is the ceiling with Sam Ellinger as quarterback for this team? Well, I mean, right now it's too tough. I would say to even guess. Yeah, but, it would be. I mean, seven. You could lose eight all those wins, games seven, without him. Seven wins would be the ceiling. Seven, eight wins would be the ceiling. It's a, it's just a freshman quarterback. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that this would be tough. That just that's tough. And it was tough on Buccelli last year. That's just that's a lot to ask of somebody. Yeah, if it's a freshman and, home game, you might win it. And a new system. Remember, Shane Buccelli was. Remember, he was in the perfect system for that transition from being, you know, a high school senior to being a true freshman starter at, at a Power Five school, right? Because he. That Sterling Gilbert system, it fit him. Yeah. All right. And Ellinger may. Yeah. And because Ellinger, in from what I've heard, he because of his skill set really does fit the skill set. It's very compatible with that Tom Herman system. So you may see that success. That not doesn't necessarily translate to wins. Bucelli was great last year. Yeah. How many games did they win? Still right. not bowl True eligible. freshman. You know what I mean? Like, so it's up. But supporting cast around him, I don't, I don't know if it's better. I, I think it's better. I think the defense is better, but you lost Deontay Foreman, who was one of the right. best offensive players in the country. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I if know he can Chris run Warren, like hell and just yeah. go Chris Warren's healthy, offensive line gets a push, well, then, yeah, they could win those games. It's a lot. Yeah, so, so I don't know. So I'll ask you the same thing. If if you have Bouchelle and you take Connor Williams out of the equation for a significant amount of time, mm. how, well, how does that alter the ceiling of this team? 
Mm. Alters a lot because yeah. it really hurts against elite pass rush talent, which I guess USC or Oklahoma, other better Big 12 schools will have. So I, just, that, I just think the, the way the Big 12 is built on speed, Rob. We talk about, you know, if, if, the, if the NFL draft showed you anything aside from, I just, the, the oh, the Big 12 didn't have that many players. To me, that's a lazy take because anybody could have seen that coming a mile away. If yeah. you follow this conference and you study it, you know the talent level across this league is not what it was a decade ago. It's just, mm-hmm. not, just not, period, point blank. It's not. Yeah. And if you follow recruiting, you already have a good idea of that. If the NFL draft showed you anything, it showed you that the college game and in turn the NFL game, it is becoming a spread speed league. It is becoming a three, mm-hmm. four, multiple league mm-hmm. defensively that is primarily based on speed. The NFL right now really isn't val- – they're not valuing – the hulking, you know, 330-pound nose tackle. They're not valuing the 250-pound thumper at middle linebacker. That's across all sports. The safety position has changed completely. It is more of a spread, speed-based game now at all levels than ever You have more DBs drafted in the first two rounds of this draft than any other draft in the modern era of the NFL draft, which uh, tells you that – there are a lot. The, the teams are matching up with defensive backs everywhere across the board. Why? Because they got to match up with speed. Who's covering tight ends? It ain't linebackers. All right, they don't trust linebackers to do it. It's defensive backs, and they want hybrid guys. They would like these <laughs> freaks who can kind of be hybrid players. That's why they would like, um, you know, guys like Teron Matthews, a honey badger. Um, you know, those types of players, the safeties that can do both. And, I mean, so that is, you know, that that's kind of being – it shows you the evolution of the game. And, yeah, all you need to say is this. The the Big 12 had one player drafted in the first round, and it was a Texas Tech quarterback. <laughs> that's all you need to say about what the NFL has start to, started to value. Right, remember it's bizarre remember world. It's about, total yeah, opposite. About Texas Tech quarterback, system oh, guy, they never play Grant in the NFL. Those guys suck. They just yeah, they're system quarterbacks. Insert quarterback here. That's what those guys are all about. Those guys are an NFL quarterback. Now flip it. What the only player drafted in the first round for the Big Twelve was a Texas Tech quarterback. That's awesome. Who was coached by a Texas Tech quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, whoa, what the hell is happening? Yeah. To your boy, Jeff, that's what the NFL is now. Yeah. It's a spread league. And they don't want to admit it. They're still like, they, they think they think it like admits weakness or something to admit it. So they, right. they don't want to admit they're a spread league. But that's where they're going. You don't know why? Because all the quarterbacks that are transitioning to the NFL, the NFL considers underdeveloped. Nope. They're just spread quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. They just haven't haven't been developed into your pro system. What you're saying they, right now is the same thing for big men. When you look in basketball yeah. and the way that they say, oh, they aren't tough, they aren't doing it. It's like, no, they're being extended out to the top to take yeah. a switch and to guard yeah. a guard. Yeah. So they have to be they're Kevin Durant, undersized Kevin Durant, and 6'11". Lengthy. Yeah. And, and tw- 10 years ago, he's playing you know, power forward. Yeah, Draymond's 6'7", <laughs> playing center, and he's the best defensive one out there because yeah, he can yeah, switch at the top of the key. You it's can, the same thing. You can, yeah. f- you can flip it. And instead of calling it, oh, it's a sp- becoming a spread game. It's going to spread game. It's got that negative connotation. It's kind of like if you're a janitor, you'd be like, "Well, I'm a sanitation engineer." Yeah, yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like so, uh, if, you, if you just say, "Oh, it's becoming more of a speed and space game." Yeah, whatever. That's like the it. NFL's fancy way. Yeah. Okay, Pace so and you're, space. you're so it's you're like becoming more telling. spread oriented. Yeah. Well, it used to be the stretch four, the stretch five was a bad yeah. thing. Now it's like every team needs a couple of them. So yeah, that's that's all it is. Okay, so you're right. A point is that that's the way the game is going. Yeah. You talk about the Big Twelve being the ultimate space league, ultimate space mm-hmm. spread league. Um, defenses are based on speed. If you take Connor Williams out of that equation, to me, you lose physicality. And again, your offensive line goes from one of the better units in the league. To Rod, we talked about it. It's not a stretch to say you take Connor Williams out; they become below average really fast. Yeah, I mean you can you can you can. That's not a good to, thing, man. Yeah, you can try to compensate for it, change the offense, become more of a um, kind of dink and dunk offense where the ball is out extremely quickly, right? Uh, and you basically kind of make it like old school Texas Tech football, mm-hmm. where you know you got four wide receivers and hell. You don't have to worry about the pass rush because unless they got some freak over there, he can't get to the quarterback anyway in less than three seconds, and the ball is going to be out anyway. You Especially know if I mean? you look at the way that left side is constructed, which Patrick yeah. Vahe might be your best run blocker. Yeah. We've clearly seen he's got issues in pass protection. Yeah. Well, a lot of those issues get alleviated when you play – next to a guy like Connor Williams who is a brick wall, not going to let anything through him or around him. Yeah. If you take him out of the equation, 
that the really flaws of that it. the flaws the, the of the O line is a the right. ultimate unit. So, Patrick Vahey yeah. becomes more exposed, yeah. which in turn Zach Shackelford becomes more exposed. So does Jake McMillan. Shackelford. You're taking one of those guys at right tackle. Maybe it's Nicholson or Hodges, putting them over on the left side where they haven't been because Williams has been there the whole time. Yeah, it's a different ball game. No. So yeah, I, I like it. It's it's definitely the better take. It's the how to take. Uh, agreed. Here's one, this is you could go a number of different directions. Who is the most indispensable player Texas has on defense? Because I think you could go a number of different directions with this answer. Yeah, you could. This is yeah. I mean, this. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I got to give it some serious thought here. I, I'll, I'll throw it going, out there. Going all the way through every level. I'll here. throw well, it out there, and, and you guys can discuss it. But this is just based on where things sit right now. I'm gonna go with Puna Ford, and here's why. If you look at this, goes back to one of your theories, Rod. If you look at every successful Texas defense always had a really good or just a stalwart at defensive tackle mm-hmm. as you put it that rock of gibraltar at defensive tackle yeah now is puna ford gonna be that guy is he an all-american type guy no but i go back and look at the 2013 defense that was brutal to start the year got manny diaz fired it was so bad yeah and then greg robinson comes in and after a few weeks they start to play better football mm-hmm. but it wasn't just greg robinson the rise of that defense coincided kind of with the rise of Chris Whaley. And if you look at when that defense fell off, the second half of that West Virginia game, the big loss to Oklahoma State, getting rolled by Oregon in the bowl game, all that happened after Chris Whaley hurt his knee. Yeah. So I think you don't necessarily have to have an All-American. If you have a guy who you just know what you're going to get from him each and every week, and and we know Tom Herman has praised Puna Ford for being an effort guy. He said if we have 11 of the uh, Puna Ford's out there, we wouldn't have to worry. So if you just get Puna Ford, if he's just like this at a kind of a maybe a like an like not even a first team all conference, just like a second team all Big Twelve type mm-hmm. level, if he just stays there through twelve games, yeah, I think that's going to help this defense more than anything. If you've got that senior mm-hmm. who's got game experience, who's been through the ringer, who's been through a conference schedule, knows what this league is all about, I think that's going to help this defense. I, I think I like in, until. Until one of those young tackles, whether it's Elliott or Christmas or a number of those guys, pick anyone you want. Unless until one of those guys is ready to step up, I think Puna Ford is the guy you can least afford to lose. I like that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with. I know this is kind of a cheesy answer. I would like to go DBU and go like PJ Lock at the nickel. There is no I'm, cheesy answer. That's here, what right? I was thinking. I know that's a good one in the Big Twelve, but I'm gonna go with Malik Jefferson. I'll tell you why, because. Everybody knows how talented Malik Jefferson is. Because he's a freak. Everybody knows he's a freak. NFL scouts know he's a freak. Fans know he's a freak. Everybody does. And he had a setback last year. And I think it was almost symbolic of the Longhorn defense. When the guy who's the most talented player on your defense and everybody agrees that it's 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 a consensus, <laughs> right? right. And there's, like, there's no debate about it. It's like, yep, Malik Jefferson is the most talented player on defense and he cannot achieve his potential, then I think it is, uh, in a lot of ways, in kind of a microcosm of the underachievement of the entire defense as a whole. Yeah. If that guy, who's right now people projecting as a first-round pick in 2018, if, that guy, if you can't get the best out of that guy, yeah. That's the fu- that's the five star guy. It's that's like the, the guy. LeBron principle. If yeah. he's playing at his best, it's heightening everybody, everybody. He makes everybody around him better. And I will say this as a locker room guy, we all know they look up to Malik. We all know that. Go look on social media. Go look at everything. Mm-hmm. Malik's the guy. Everybody knows that. We heard Deontay talk about it when he was in here. Well, yeah. Deontay was the guy last year, you know? Exactly. So that is my thing. I think if Malik ain't if Malik ain't at his best and he's not reaching his potential and he's not the guy then that that defense is underachieving because we know he's a freak, like a freak. Hell, he's going to get drafted in the first, you know, two rounds of the draft probably regardless, like Marquise Goodwin style. We don't give a damn about his production. He a freak. We'll, 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 we'll figure out what to do with him. You guys don't know what the hell y'all doing down there in Texas. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys. We got to get the best out of him. Mm-hmm. So that's my guy. 
Matt, anything you want to throw in before we wrap this thing up? I was going to say, PJ Luck, I really like the one right there with Malik because of the ceiling. But then, like, I think the other one, if you hear what the coaches have said have been key to their defenses, is Hager's role. So, But it's like you almost feel <laughs> like that's something that you expect to happen and to be there. It isn't as if it's going to elevate you the way that Malik would or isn't going to make you have a void where it compromises the integrity of integrity of your defense like a nickelback position would but if he isn't there it may not even be good so that's mm -hmm. a baseline type situation that's true all right that's gonna do it for this week's edition of the blitz again travis over here the best damn videographer in the podcast game uh again Round special thank you to papa foreman deontay foreman the entire foreman family for having hashtag uh, team foreman having us over for the draft party getting to be a part of that experience foreman and Jarrison. uh Man, Rod, you talk about a lifetime Longhorn, especially a consensus All-American, a Doak Walker Award winner, a legend like Deontay Foreman, being in Houston, the marketing opportunities seem endless. He's got a him. chance to become legendary in the state. He's yeah. never le He's only played football in Texas. You don't want to draw he's never had to leave the state. But uh, there football. was another guy named Earl that did the same thing. Right? That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, only in the state. Yeah, and, uh, that's Texas. What I'm saying. And, uh, he's got a chance to be legendary, man. But he's from Texas City. He ain't from Tyler. That's even closer to home. It just seems like one Not of them stories. The uh, it seems like one of them stories. Uh, so, big thank you to the Foreman family for making that happen. Happen. And a shout-out to one of our loyal listeners, uh, Mac Ryan. Didn't have a chance to text you back before the show, so definitely just want to give you a shout-out. Hope you're doing well, brother. Peace, uh, man. Matt, yep. thanks for everything, man. You are more than welcome. Rod B., appreciate the time and the knowledge. Anytime, brother. For Matt, for Rod, for everybody at AM 1300 The Zone, am 1300 com, where you can hear this podcast each and every week. And thanks to Matt, you get us on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and any podcast app. Yep, just type in Longhorn Blitz. For the Zone family, for the Horns 24-7 family, I am Jeff Howe. Thank you so much for downloading and listening, and we will catch you again on the next episode. You've been listening to Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Remember, for the latest Longhorn news 24-7, visit Horns247.com.